And the reason I, I guess I asked specifically is because the media in, in Britain is a little bit different than it is here. It's especially the music media. They tend to bring people up really quick and then tear them back down. How do you deal with that side of things? I haven't got to that bit yet. Yeah, okay, sweet. You just haven't <laughs> I mean, put out a bad album, I guess. You know? I mean, there's always, there's always like one or two reviews. I think probably one per album that I've read that were a bit odd, you know, but they didn't, I think, you know, they didn't get what I was doing, so it didn't affect me, you know. It only really hurt me if it's someone that I really admire. Mm. And then you just get over it. I mean, you know, I just recorded another album, uh, and it, which is coming out in the UK in a month or something, and... Oh wow! It's actually a covers record. It's just really stripped down. But um, yes, I read something about this. Um, it's a shame what it's happened. A shame to about Gemma Ray. Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, what can you tell us about? Who do you cover on it? First of all, um, uh, I can't remember. I done <laughs> like a medley of um, the theme from Rosemary's Baby because I really love the composer of that film, Christoph Kameda, um, with a Sonic Youth lyric that I really liked, and some stuff I really completely chopped up and done my own thing with some stuff's a little bit more loyal to the original but um, I've done a very um, down a beat version of uh, Every Day by Buddy Holly um, Touch Me I'm Sick that was sort of inspired by the Sonic Youth version um, oh, I don't know what else I've done now what else did I do? person over there not on camera <laughs> huh? oh Gun Club song Gun Club song Ghost on the Highway Lee Hazelwood nice yeah lots of different stuff that's cool. But that might, you know, that might be where everyone hates me, but, you know, what can you do? I enjoyed recording it. Well, I mean, will that <laughs> stuff, will that stuff come out here as well? Obviously, yeah. Yeah, I think so, eventually. So, on that note, like, this album is um, all over the place when it comes to genres. Mm -hmm. you know, there's two questions I want to ask you there is, you know, obviously you're a young lady, but, I mean, there's so many influences, I think, from the past. How did you get into so much music from... Um... I don't know, just old things always bring out the magpie in me, you know, anything sort of old and worn and loved with a history, you know, ob random objects from charity shops or clothing and anything, and I think that just applies to music too for me, because it just seems to have so much more weight and things from a different era always fascinate me, and I do look for things I like from, from now, and there are some bands I really love from this period of time, but just the, the stuff that sticks with me always seems to be from... You know, I love the sort of romantic sort of ballads from the sort of big band era and stuff like that. I just feel more affinity with those than a lot of modern music, I guess. Cool. You all right? Oh, okay. Sure. I thought you were <laughs> looking at the mic or something weird. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm doing that with him over there. Okay, yeah. Okay. <laughs> we can edit this. It's okay. Um, on that note, though, if you could uh, recommend five albums to someone, five essential albums that they need to have in their collection, what mm -hmm. five would you tell them to buy um, on vinyl? They won't necessarily be my favourites because that would just, I'd take me days. <laughs> but off the top of my head, yeah. uh, maybe Fire of Love by Gun Club, um, The Rotten Mile by a London band called Gun and Drunk. Um, uh, I love um, the Nick Cave record that I don't know had, I don't know if I had that many good reviews. Uh, it did have good reviews, but a lot of the fans were a bit like, oh, it's a bit, you know, a bit too different. But No More Shall We Part by Nick Cave. I, I really think that's a really elegant, beautiful record. Um, I've got this brilliant girl group box set um, by a small label called Rhino that's just killer songs on there. And my fifth one would be... I'm trying to think now, Pressure. Maybe a soundtrack album nice. by John Barry, because you just can't go wrong. <laughs> um, now, speaking of soundtracks, this album uh, is very, I mean, there's a song here I actually wrote down. It's my favorite song of the album is uh, If You Want to Rock and Roll. Oh, it right. sounds like a Tim Burton, Danny Elfman movie or something. Oh, cool. Well, is there a story about that song? or? Um, it sounds like a movie. It sounds very soundtrack. Good. Yeah, that's how yeah. it feels when the chord progressions and that kind of make me feel in that world, you know, definitely. Mm. And um, um, it was just a very easy song that just kind of fell out of its own accord, to be honest. You know, I didn't, didn't consciously 
decide to give it any kind of place in the world. So it's quite pure in that respect. But I did decide to refer to ACDC in the title because it, <laughs> it was in danger of being a bit too, bit too serious and dark. So Yeah, well, I mean, that's the one thing about the song is like, I was like, okay, why is it called this? You yeah, know yeah, I, mean? I, I must admit that was me just thinking like, for God's sake, you know, people <laughs> are going to think I haven't got a sense of humour, so, you know. Um, have you done any sort of soundtrack work or...? Um, I did do um, some stuff for a, a BBC indie film called Mum and Dad, which is the most horrifying thing I've ever seen in my life. It ends up on Christmas Day with a guy crucified to the wall with his legs chopped off. Nice, <laughs> lovely. But it's good, actually. It's quite funny, believe it or not. Um, it's got Perry Benson in and some really dry actors, you know. Um, so I did do some stuff for that, which was great, but I'd, I would definitely be up for doing some more if it comes my way, because it's just real nice change it's really indulgent just to do music and interpret someone else's world you know now you have the sound of this album is um it's like epic i mean there's so much so much stuff going on and so many layers and but you do it all by yourself live is that right um well at the moment my solo set I've, i'm using some samples that i've pre-created um is that a word pre-create probably not uh, um, it might be yeah i, don't know. I think it is now um it is now yes yeah um <laughs> Yeah, at the moment I'm using some tricks and layering some stuff up live. You know, I'm trying to use loop kind of effects in an original way because they've been a bit overused recently. But um, ideally I'd play a six-piece band and they're really great. We've been working together for a year or so and really kind of getting the spirit across now, I think, of the record. So do you like playing with a band or do you like playing by yourself? I like both. I like all or nothing. I either like playing totally on my own or with, you know, six people or more, you know. Uh, I read something about a knife. Yeah, play with a, I've a used, knife? I used, yeah, I've, I've always used something kind of of that shape to make a sort of droning noise on my guitar ever since I can remember, really. I think I was more drawn to using a guitar to, so I didn't have to bother learning how to play it, to be honest, when I, was, yeah. when I was younger. And I think I went from a slide, which didn't feel long enough, to a boiler pipe to kind of rub up and down to make it drony. And then, and then I've lost my sort of bit of pipe and used a kitchen knife. Just, and it worked better than all of them, so I now just stick to the knife. See, I'd imagine that would add to the dark vibe. When yeah, it's not actually intentional. I mean, it's, it's obviously it's visually, visually appealing. Um, I just think I it's guess, pretty badass. I've never heard of anybody playing. But it's not. It's, 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 an, it's an accident, you know. It's not yeah. like, oh, look at me, I'm crazy. Well, I, you're going for the sound. Knife. Yeah, exactly. Cool. So. Um, I wanted to ask you about uh, <coughs> Dig Me a River. Mm -hmm. Are you a spiritual person? Um, not in a specific way. I've got my own um, pretty uh, random systems of uh, beliefs, but I change them every day. But I haven't got um, any religious leanings. Um, no. Well, I mean, it, it just sounds Me like not meanings. Sorry, that doesn't even make sense, does it? <laughs> um, I haven't got any sort of religious fixations. Ties. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, you can be spiritual and not religious. Yeah, exactly. So, is that the category you fall into? Yeah, I guess so. I definitely, I just think, you know... Because it's a soulful song. It's a, it sounds like a spiritual song. Yeah, I mean, I do listen to a lot of gospel and, and I really think I've got that, that sort of slight yearning inside me that um, certain musicians have and I think that can go into blues and gospel and a lot of sp spiritual kind of music. And uh, yeah, that's good that it co co comes out in that song. But, you know, I do... I do um, think a lot about stuff, I guess, and that's always going to come out in the music, that, uh, in a kind of certain spirituality, I suppose. Mm. But. Um, now, you were telling me you're going to go, uh, you fly back to Germany after CMW is done, mm -hmm. uh, and then you go to Texas for South by Southwest, and mm -hmm. then what's the plan after that? Are we going to see you back up here, or are you going to come back over to Canada? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I'd like to put Maybe. a tour together. Yeah, definitely. I'd like to, yeah, I have to see, see how it goes. And then... Uh, Roughly an idea when we'll see the covers album come out. Um, Any idea? No, my record <laughs> label's over there, so I don't know. We'll see. Maybe like summer or something. Cool. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. It's nice to meet you. You too.